And thank you so much for waiting through that break. I'm still Regina. This is still Rosemary. And we totally appreciate you guys for hanging on through that. I know there was a lot of fun talk in chat about, like, you know, um, everyone's most feared Pokemon in Series 8. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's a fun one to think about. I mean, it's only been a week since it's come out. But, uh, Rosemary, do you have one that I think you're that, that you would consider the one that you fear the most? I don't like playing Kyogre Mirrors, so I might have to say Kyogre also, because I've been using Kyogre a lot on the Battle Stadium ladder. Kyogre Mirrors are terrifying. I, I don't like it. It makes me Dynamax Regieleki far more often than I think I'd like to admit with the team. Uh, but I was seeing some Kyogre from some other people in the chat as well, but I feel like we have a good answer to that, Regina. <laughs> uh, it's called, uh, I was going to say Tapu Rillaboom, but it's Rillaboom and Kartana. Like, that's, you just click like, Grassy Glad and you're okay, right? Like, that's your end game there. Um, but I can understand why people are afraid of uh, Kyogre. I think it's funny that that's the answer now, when before it probably would have been Xerneas for a lot of people because... yeah Xerneas is definitely scary i think that's a um, that's a that's a that's a tough one <laughs> what is, what would mine be actually i ugh, i don't think i've played enough for them oh no you know what any of the horses like um ice rider or ghost rider i know they haven't really been used or sorry shadow rider um they just kind of scare me in the sense that uh i'm not used to seeing them and i don't really know what they're gonna do and i loved using spectrier so i already know that they hit hard but i'm really glad that i have run into a lot of them in ladder because i just i'm like what do i do against this team every time i see one <laughs> <laughs> me every time i just actually look at team preview what do i do uh that's yeah i just add myself this, that's I fine just do this <laughs> oh, I am, I'm the exact same way. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is so much easier when we're sitting back here like this than it is when you're behind a controller and you're like, what What do we do now? Like, do I just click it? It's thinking about playing on um, Battle Stadium is also just, now I'm just like getting nervous again. <laughs> But, we, well, we're not the ones playing, so that's good, yeah. right? We don't have to be the ones worried about team preview or any of this stuff, but we do have some incredible players that do need to start thinking about team preview because we're about to get into our next top four match. I'm super, super excited about this. We're already at the top four of the women's tournament, and it is so exciting to be here. You guys will definitely recognize them. One of them we just had on stream last round. It will be Yoko with that um, that Lapras, the Dustman, the Krasma, and the Ferrothor, which was honestly able to kind of steamroll that Togekiss, especially, you know, carrying that team on its back. And then from earlier today, you've got Mogar, who also has, I want to say, a Lapras, but more importantly, they're carrying that Zacian, which was one of those Pokemon that I was expecting to see a lot more, especially in Top Cut, you know, the ability in Tarpid Sword, giving you that plus one on every single switch in. Um, and I will say this, and you guys can add me all you want. I think Behemoth Blade is one of the best animations ever. Um, and like, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's so cool looking. It's one of those, like, you walk away from an explosion, and it's great. <laughs> all of the restricted signature move animations that were redone for pokemon sword and pokemon shield are just so so clean i could i, I could stare up. at them all day <laughs> um you know they definitely did get a glow up and i love seeing like the re like the i guess the reanimations for them but both of these players would be playing for a spot finals and then you know the winner of finals and those in top cut will actually be getting some prizes from our sponsor top cut events they were gracious enough to give us some play mats and some plushies and if i had known there were plushies on the line i definitely would have entered um, i am one of those people who every time a new plushie is released i sit there and hover over the add it to your cart button and <laughs> i can tell from your background that you are very much the same way <laughs> um Just yeah <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe just. We're we're not gonna talk about my addiction, okay? It's not that's not this it's type not, of show. Not <laughs> it's not an addiction. It's it's making sure that all those plushies have a safe home. Yes, <laughs> they do. They do have a very, very good home here at, at my house. Um, but yes, yeah, thank you so much to Top Cut Events for sponsoring this stream, uh, yeah, the, sponsoring our actual Top Cut, um, and also making sure that the, the players are getting some kind of reward for their hard work for this tournament. Um, but now going back to the Mogar-Yoko matchup, so they both got like gigantic. So they both have gigantic Mechal's operas. One has Duskman, the other one has Zacian. So we've uh, we've got two different kinds of Steel type Pokemon. Um, and so one's a fairy and one is psychic. 
So I think it's really going to be interesting, especially Mogar's answer to what a Farathon would be. Um, you know, in Sonar, it's generally a lot of people's favorite answer to that. And then you've also got Pokemon that have like really good fighting type moves as well. So I think maybe now the question is, how do you deal with that Togekiss? Yeah, that Togekiss is definitely going to be something that you have to be super, super careful about because we already saw how much work it can put in in terms of those yawns going off onto the enemy team. And, you know, I think that forces you into a really awkward position of having to rotate through your Pokemon, maybe in a way that you don't want to because you're trying to set up for your own success. And I think that's something that can hurt a lot of different players um, when having to play against that. However, when you do take a look at both of these teams and you do take a look at the fact that you have a Togekiss on that side of the field well guess what well, we're just gonna Raichu. So Raichu is definitely a great way to help pivot through some of those Pokemon. You can use Volt Switch for, for quite a bit of damage. You can also use Fake Out if you're worried about that. Um, you also have the ability to kind of hit it for super effective damage if you wanna go for that Lapras when you wanna go for the G-Max Resonance as well. So I think that's something that, you know, Morgan can look at and go, hey, that, that might be an answer to this problem if they're looking at it as a problem. Yeah, um, and actually, it's really nice that you point out that Raichu because we saw that Raichu have the Nuzzle move as opposed to something like Electro, right? And Nuzzle mm -hmm. is one of those really fun moves because it's not known for its dealing damage. It's known for the fact that it paralyzes you. And if you're able to stop sort of like maybe Togekiss from being able to set up Yawn because you paralyze, Honestly, that could be something that's like huge in your favor, right? Like it's it might as well just be a battle of sort of status afflictions between this Togekiss and this Raichu, especially because that Togekiss is pretty slow based off of what we saw from Yoko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Raichu is a usually very fast Pokemon, so you're kind of kind of expect it to be able to you know cycle through a little bit faster, especially if you wanted to maybe get your Intimidate users in there or you know something like Incineroar, which we've seen from a lot of the Incineroar during this particular tournament. They are running Parting Shots, so that might be a factor if you are looking at the Incineroar that Mogro is using. So I think that's something to also be cognizant of in terms of rotating through Pokemon or actually having a utility and a way to be able to rotate through very cleanly and Sonara is one of those pokemon that suffers from like five move syndrome and it's just so <laughs> yeah you want it all <laughs> yeah as soon as you see as soon as you see parting shot though you're like okay it's not a salt vest we can like figure out what else it might be i mean um honestly i think like you know when you're running like a pokemon like in Sonara, who after it finally got intimidate just climbed to the top of usage and stayed there and hasn't really you know moved and it's one of those pokemon that it's terrorizing a new generation of players in sword mm -hmm. and shield because um i'll have people i'll hear people complain about it and, and, I'll, and i go oh yeah it, it was it's always been a problem and like it was more so after intimidate got introduced for it and one of one of these things are, you know you're just gonna see in sonora be classified like as a legendary pokemon just because of how often people use it and what a pain it is to have to deal with yeah, absolutely. I can I can definitely sympathize with that. Um, I love seeing all of the Raichus in chat, though. Looks like we've got a couple of Mogar fans. Uh, super excited to, to see that happening here. But I'm also really excited to see how Yoko decides to play out this match. Um, both of these players are incredibly accomplished when it comes down to how well they have played in the video game championship circuit previously. So this is going to be an absolutely exciting, explosive banger of a match. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And both the Lapras are going to hit the field here. Yoko leading with Incineroar and, uh, and Lapras as Mogar leading with the, um, their own Lapras and Raichu, actually. So a little bit of fake-out pressure from both sides. But more importantly, you've got now that G-Max Resonance possibility coming out from both players. All right, well, taking a look at what's going to happen here, especially when you're looking at the Lapras on both sides of the field, you, you might not necessarily want to keep your Incineroar in there. So I respect this coming out from Yoko, maybe just saying, hey, I can use this opportunity to try to get Ferrothorn set up very, very quickly here. And Mogar actually going to take this opportunity to say, hey, you know what? If it's uh, if Lapras is on the field, we're going to do what Lapras is known for, and we're going to go for that Gigantamax. Going to try to set up that G-Max Resonance. I will say right now, I love the color of this Lapras. I think it is one of the best shinies <laughs> out there. I, I mean, I think regular Lapras also looks really pretty, but this is one of those Pokemon that has aged absolutely well. But Yoko returning with her own Gigantamax. So uh, based off of you know, how like the order of these Pokemon um, Gigantamax 
relaxing. We can see that Mogar is probably going to be faster unless they somehow are tied for speed. But Yoko running a trick room team uh, might not necessarily want that for the most part. But both Gigantamax is coming out on this turn. Yeah, going for the Gigantamax here just kind of says to me that, oh, wait, what's this? Raichu's going to go ahead and use Helping Hand and for the Max Geyser. That's going to do a lot of damage. But the fact that Morgar's Lapras oh goes first sets up the rain for Yoko's Lapras if they went for Max Geyser too. Oh my gosh, that Rothorn had took a lot of damage from that Max Geyser. Like, that Helping Hand is just so nice. But G-Max Resonance is going to be the move of choice from Yoko. And is targeting down that Raichu and doesn't quite get it down to that 1 HP range to maybe show if it was um, Focus Ash or not. However, you know, now that that Raichu is a little bit more of a precarious spot, at least you're able to set up your screens and take care of a little bit of a bigger threat on Malcolm's side. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to figure out what this Raichu could potentially do here. I, I think that the best position that it's in is maybe to try to go for a little bit of damage here. I do like the the, the selection of the Volt Switch, uh, especially because this is a good read now, recognizing that the Ferrothorn might protect in this instance. And this is exactly what that Ferrothorn did as Raichu goes for the Volt Switch into Yoko's Lapras, gets um, some damage down into it, but more importantly, allows them to uh, sort of pivot around to a different Pokemon. It is actually going to be bringing out the, restric the Restricted, which is going to be that Zacian. Again, that plus one thanks to Intrepid Sword makes Zacian such a scary Pokemon to have to like face down, especially if you're not um, able to intimidate intimidate it down as often as you might like. But on the second turn now, we're going to have Mora's Lapras it's finally set up that screen. So going to have a little bit of extra turns gets a critical hit onto uh what like into that fair offering spot but again thanks to that protect is able to get to mitigate a little bit of the damage it would have otherwise taken and now max geyser from yoko's uh lapras is going to be boosted by the rain set up by bogers or it's going to do a lot of damage onto that zation on that switch in almost half of its own hp yeah, that was a lot of damage that we are going to see that Zacian take. But this is kind of where Zacian thrives, is that it wants to be in front of a Gigantamax or a Dynamax Pokemon, especially when it does have access to that Behemoth Blade. It's going to be doing quite a bit more damage, especially if it is going to be um, onto a Dynamax target. But this just doesn't feel like the right time to have to go for something like that, especially if, you know, um, Yoko does have access to that Intimidate to be able to drop that attack stat back down to neutral and maybe even go for a max guard but i like the sword oh, that, here. Oh, yeah that intimidate does not matter to uh Mogar's Zacian. it is going to go for that sword stand so it's going to be a plus one still as max geyser now from malcolm's lapras continually being the fast one is able to catch that incinerator on that switch in does a massive amount of damage however not enough to knock it out thanks to that squeeze that yoko's own lapras had set up in previous turns and now incinerator is able to at least chomp down on that very get back a lot of that hp and now yoko returning fire with her own max geyser into that Zacian. we saw it do almost half now but not enough to pick up and in the rain so again screens really playing an important uh, important role here and kind of showing why lapras and zashin together are really kind of fun to watch yeah, I mean, okay, so colloquially, a lot of people have been calling this lapdog, whether or not you agree with calling it that. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, I don't know, I'm not going to tell you what to what to call it, but I think that the power in this particular duo comes from the fact that Lapras can set up the screens, and then Zacian's able to sit safely behind those screens and set up for dealing out some really big damage. Uh, I think that... Uh, you know, Malcolm is still in this position where they really want to try to play it safe here. So I appreciate the double protect from both sides just to mitigate some of that damage. But oh. ooh. Yeah, so Yoko switching out that Incineroar for um, her Ferrothorn, and as both of Mogus Pokemon hide behind that Protect, Yoko taking this opportunity to click Parish Song, a move that honestly I've been like really surprised to see lately, just because it's usually paired up with a Pokemon that has Shadow Attack, but really good at trying to um, use for Endgame. So surprising to see it here, I think, because of the fact that we have four Pokemon on each side still. Well, you know, I, I kind of think that in this position, you, you don't necessarily want to switch out unless you really, really have to. I think that, you know, that Zacian is kind of on its last legs to, to stand on, especially when it is sitting at that 12 HP. So you have to be careful about how you decide to use some of that damage. Uh, you do have the ability to switch out most of your Pokemon, so you can get rid of the Parish Song effect. But I think that Zacian here should just kind of go for some damage and and see what it can get done. 
this is going to switch out on this turn. Incineroar being revealed as well on um, Mogar's side is going to get intimidated down into Pokemon that don't really care much about that, especially that Lapras. Um, but like you had said, right, like that Paris song is going to allow you to at least have to like try to pivot around. And I just realized that Mogar's Pokemon are have been taking pretty heavy damage here and Incineroar as well now on Yoko's side are going to come out in place of that Frothorn so both Lapras and Frothorn gonna have, don't have to worry about Paris Song anymore. Lapras going for the Protect on Yoko's side um, is going to stay in for one more turn here as Zashin goes for that Sacred Sword unfortunately does not get the Incineroar and goes into that Protected Lapras spot instead. Yeah, uh, a little bit of a, you know, unfortunate protect there from Mogar, but a great protect there coming out from Yoko to be able to read that play correctly. And now that they've repositioned to get the Incineroar in, it might be, depending on how these trained, uh, be a little bit of a speed tie to see who can fake out who. This Zashian is literally, like you said, on its last legs, and I think it's at plus four. Oh, it's actually at neutral now um, because it had the Intrepid Sword, was intimidated, Swords Dance, and is now intimidated again. So it's at neutral, so it doesn't have like that. This it usually gets its Lapras on Yo from Yogo is going to be withdrawn, and the last Pokemon being revealed to be Necrozma, Ooh. a really healthy Necrozma here. A fake out from Mogar's Incineroar is going to be faster than uh, Yogo's own Incineroar, but that Sacred Sword going into Necrozma, it honestly just does some like almost no damage at all as its parish count falls to one and uh, this is the point where i think you're okay with just letting that zashin go down because it's not gonna be able to do much anymore yeah that's kind of the unfortunate <sighs> kind of way that Zacian gets played right now is that like, uh, you know, you really do want to position it so that it is in front of a Dynamax or Gigantamax Pokemon, but also like it can do a lot of work on its own, especially when it did have access to that sword stance to be able to boost up its attack. You can see it just able to take out that Incineroar there very quickly. Yeah, so Zashin being able to go first. And actually, now Mogar's and Sonora going for the parting shot drops Yoko's Necrozma uh, down by one attack stage. And because of the fact that it's prison armor, uh, because it's a decimated Necrozma, it means that it doesn't have to worry about like not connecting with that, as Lapras is going to be switched back in. Lapras still at full health, but both the Incinera and the Raichu that are in the back for Mogar are kind of both, like not looking super healthy as Yoko takes this opportunity to set up that trick room. Zashian uh, loses the last remaining 12 HP it had as like that Paris song drops to zero. <laughs> I can't with chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Spam these potatoes to help support the commentators. <laughs> I'm a what now? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I don't even know what's going on in the game right now. I just got really distracted. No, it's okay. No, don't even worry. So what's happening right now is Incineroar and Lapras, and a Dust Mater Cosma, and another Lapras. So Incineroar is at full health, has that big out pressure. Is I think now Necrozma's at minus two. Um, and so let's see, Yoko's lost her Incineroar, and Mogar's lost his Zashin. And as of right now, I think you've got, now I think now's the time to be like worrying a little bit about like that pair of end game as well. Um, and the Lapras is, uh, now that we have Trick Room up, Yoga I think has a little bit more of that advantage. Yeah, I, I getting back to the game, uh, chat, you guys are lovely. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, we are going to see that Hydro Pump come through, landing onto the Incineroar, but I, you know, I think this is kind of an interesting position for Malcolm to be in because you're absolutely right about needing to deal with the Parish Song now. You're not going to have as many opportunities to get those switches in as you might want to have. So that might be something to really pay attention to for these next couple of turns. Oh man, Mogar's and Sinar is actually a Citrus Berry, and so I was able to get back that HP right away. Um, that Necrozma going for the Sword Stance though to bring it back up to neutral. Oh no, it gets burned from the Flare Blitz. Oh no! Um, actually, that's that burn. Okay, that burn chance for Flare Blitz, like I have no. I think it's like what a ten percent chance to get burned from that. That is one of the most stressful things to see every time you get hit by flare blitz the first thing i think of is please don't burn please don't burn oh, and so bad. no yoko was in such a good spot too that burn just hurts so badly because you activate the weakness policy and you get rid of the intimidate and the parting shot um sort of like attack knockdown but that burn just 
takes like all the offensive like pressure that Necrozma has and just it, it's just not there anymore. Oh, I know. Yeah, that really hurts. The burn was so good for Mogar here. Like, look at how little this earthquake's gonna do. I'm just gonna let this play out itself. Man, it sort of took out like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely did. It absolutely did. Okay, I just. Okay, so both Lapras have hit their uh, Hydro Pumps, but now, like, Necrozma goes down. It, sh it could have done so much damage to both Lapras and Incineroar because it had that plus from the weakness policy. But that burn, I think, just really kind of bailed Mogar out at that moment. Just he would have had, like, a double knockout otherwise from Yoko's Necrozma. Well, now in this position, you've got the Ferrothorn in for, for virtually free here. Yoko can really set up for success going for maybe an Iron Defense here to really deal with the Incineroar's ability to Flare Blitz it, or you can just start getting out those Leech Seeds. So this is a really good position for Yoko to be in in the end game. I think that Mogar needs to really try to find a knockout here, particularly before this Lapras is going to be able to use that Parish Song. Yeah, I think if you're Mogar, you're totally okay, like, going for that Paris Song strategy now, because, like, yeah, if if Rothorn is supposed to set up and go for the Lee Seeds, but you still have that Pokemon advantage, you're able to switch out continuously and at least try to make it. So even if you do take some damage, um, like, yeah, Raichu Ooh. might go down on this turn, but um, if Incineroar avoids that, then, oh, no, he timed out. Oh my gosh, oh, so he no. actually timed out. So he's unable to switch out as Ferrothorn is able to go for the body press into Incineroar and knock it out. Um, and freeze drive from Yoko's Lapras, because we're still in trick room, so now Yoko's going to be faster, is able to do super effective damage into uh, into Mogar's own Lapras. Returning fire with its own freeze drive doesn't do that much into that Ferrothorn. Um, but I think I want to say he timed because it looked like he was trying to switch out for that Raichu. Yeah, that was, that was absolutely a timeout there. Definitely wanted to get that Raichu in instead and hopefully be able to reset. But unfortunately, they're going to lose that Pokemon. And, and that's really not what you want to see in the late game here. Uh, really unfortunate timeout there. And, you know, so Raichu is not as good to deal with both these Pokemon as it could be, especially because that Frothorn is still there. Iron Barbs and the Fake Out, I mean, Raichu is still able to hold on after all of that, so Frothorn is flinching on this turn as Lapras. Again, because we are in Trick Room from Yoko's side, is going to be faster and is able to pick up the knockout now on Mogar's Raichu and is able to make sure that this is the only Lapras left. Um, I'm not quite sure how many times the Trick Room are left, but another freeze dry from Mogar's own Lapras isn't enough to pick up that knockout. That Leftovers Recovery is just absolutely vital to this Frothorn. As Trick room finally expires, but I think a little bit too late now here for, Mo for Mogar. Yeah, unfortunately, it might be a little too late. Parish Song is just going to be able to win. Um, uh, but I think you can also just secure the knockout here. And Ferrothorn is very, very free to continue to cycle through these protects and just, yeah, keep chipping away at the damage that Malcolm really, really wants to get done here. But Parish Song here to just steal up this, this game. Parish Song from that Lapras, like you said, it. <sighs> So it's kind of crazy because you had the burn from the Flamets into the Necrozma, and then you, you've kind of got like that weird sort of like RNG that almost made it seem like Yoko might have been able, like might have lost that. But that timeout from Mogar, I think, hurt them in the end here, and uh, kind of just unable to really do anything else now that Parish Song has been activated, uh, and the fact that. Mogar was letting Yoko, I don't want to say like letting, but the fact that Trick Room was able to be set up from Yoko's side against Mogar, being able to try to navigate that is really tough sometimes. Yeah, I think that the Trick Room ended up playing a very influential part in the late game, especially because there wasn't really a great way that Malcolm was able to navigate around the Trick Room. But I feel like Malcolm still played to their outs very, very, very well when it comes down to just, you know, how to navigate that situation. And then that unfortunate timeout there, I think the the game might have been just a little bit different had that switch come through and maybe we would have seen a little bit of a different end game there but the parish song there just able to seal up that game number one and now malcolm really needs to kind of consider how they're going to deal with going through with this for the next game do they let the trick room get set up again or do you know do they find a way to maneuver around that and just make sure that that trick room does not get a chance to get set up i think that's something that yoko played super, super well for. 
too was that Zasha took so much damage from the two max guys. I was like, yeah, it was able to survive with that total HP, but once you put that much offensive pressure onto it, it's not going to be able to do much, especially now that you have like the two Intimidators, right? You see both the Incineroars from both Malcolm and from Yoko, and you've got sort of this, uh, how do you make it so that your Pokemon has that offensive pressure against your opponent, but doesn't take that much damage, especially from the Dynamax turns. And I think the speed tiers, now that you're kind of aware of them, uh, especially because consistently, right, you, you had Malcolm's Lapras be faster outside of Trick Room, and then Yoko's be faster inside Trick Room. Like, how do you make it so that, one, like you said, you stop Trick Room? And then, two, how do you make it so that when you're is it, isn't, um, like... I don't know how to put it into words. It's just like is able to do damage after the intimidates. Yeah, you, like, you really want Zacian to, to do its job. Is essentially, I think, what yeah. you're what you're trying to get at there is like Zacian really wasn't around to dish out the damage that we are expecting to see, especially out of a restricted Pokemon. And especially if you're gonna kind of put your eggs in the Zacian basket, you really are hoping that Zacian is gonna be able to secure a huge knockout, especially when it is in the face of a Dynamax or a Gigantamax Pokemon. So unfortunately, that's not gonna be the case. But we are getting into our game number two in a very similar board state to what we saw in game number one with just a couple of switches here. Yeah, so both of them still leading Lapras, but the Incineroar is on Mobar's side of the field now instead of Yoko, and Yoko stepping out that Incineroar from game one for the Frothorn lead instead. Um, both very slow Pokemon on Yoko's side of the field. We know, again, that the Lapras from Mobar is, is faster than Yoko's, um, and neither one of those Pokemon on her side are able to set up Trick Rooms, so I think a really interesting choice. So Lapras versus Lapras again. We saw both of these players go for the Gigantamax very early on, and we did see that Mogar's was faster. So recognizing that, maybe Mogar can get a chance to get something done very early on in this game. Maybe chunk away at that Ferrothorn just a little bit more, or just go ahead and start chunking away at that Lapras. You know, it's uh, definitely one way that you can handle things. But uh, I think that. Uh, the way that Yoko responds to this is going to be very telling of, of how they really want to play this game and, and how they're going to go from for the rest of this series. And so a repeat from game one, both of them going for that Gigantamax. We know that um, Malcolm had chosen to go for the Max Geyser first and had set up the rain actually uh, to the detriment of their own Zashian because Yoko had been able to sort of take advantage of that in the second turn of Dynamax. And so I think it'll be really interesting to see if they both just decide to set up that G-Max Residence now. But we are going to see that the Frothorn going for the Protect, so it doesn't want to get faked out by the Incineroar possibly. And Incineroar are going to have to be worried about maybe getting hit by the Geyser. But nope, just kidding. It uses part Parting shot instead into Yoko's Lapras is so going to mitigate the damage that it would have as its special attack drops here um, and is able to. Oh, that is a change. That is a really move that I am seeing mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that like they <laughs> click into. Uh, it is one of the Pokemon that has just absolutely been fantastic in just like Sword and Shield in general um, and is able to bring in that grassy terrain as well for a little bit of HP recovery, which let's be honest, Frothorn does not need more HP recovery, but more importantly, is able to at least hit that Lapras's Lapras from Mogar, once again, going for the Max Geyser, is setting up the rain, interestingly enough, goes into that Frother and does, I, you know, you saw the HP bar move, but honestly, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes that Protect really helping it on this turn. Yeah, setting up the rain here, but as we saw from game number one, similarly to that, Yoko is going to go for the G-Max Resonance and reads into that switch beautifully, uh, whether it was intended or not. Uh, looks really good. So congrats to Yoko for getting out that huge amount of damage onto that Rillaboom and also setting up that Aurora Veil because the parting shot at least makes it so that Rillaboom, who would normally take a lot of damage from like that ice type move, is uh, even like behind, not behind screens, was able to stay above that um, that green bar and more importantly has that grassy glide uh, ability for it and is able to go for that priority attack. Yeah, Rillaboom is definitely a very strong Pokemon to have on the field. They were talking about it being able to be a really good Pokemon for dealing with something like a Kyogre. Uh, but look at that critical hit damage coming out from the U-turn and a great way to cycle through and maybe get that Incineroar back on the field or if the, if you want, get that Zacian out there so it can start setting up and, and getting out some big damage. 
So Rillaboom was like, hey, I'm here to show everybody that I showed up for this match, uh, but I'm going to get out and bring back in Incineroar so get another Intimidate into both of these Pokemon. Um, more importantly, we had seen it use Parting Shot into that Lapras and did not take that first turn to go for the Fake Out, but Max Geyser from Mogar, after having set up during the previous turn, is going to go into that Incineroar. It does a little bit more damage this time. Still has not set up screens, though, for their side, as GMAX Residents, one more time from Yoko's Lapras, is going to go into what was that uh, Rillaboom, and is instead now that Incineroar, and Incineroar takes it like a champ, but for Rothorn, taking this opportunity to go for the Leaf Seed, connects with Malcolm's Lapras, um, and now for Rothorn, besides the leftovers and besides the Leaf Seed, also has grassy terrain as a source of mm -hmm. HP recovery. That's going to make this Ferrothorn very, very, very sticky and very difficult to remove from the field, so, you know, when you're taking a look at that, I think... Uh, you know, Morgan needs to do a little bit more damage. Uh, maybe, you know, try to set up the screens here. Now that is going to be their final turn of that Gigantamax. Um, and I really like how Malcolm is cycling through their Pokemon super beautifully. I think that's really mitigating the amount of damage that Yoko is able to do as well. Yeah, and this is, I think, the important part where you start paying attention to speed tiers and why that's so important in the first couple of games. Because now, uh, you know, Morgar is able to, like, safely go for that parting shot into Yoko's lap. It's going to be at minus two special attacks. So going to really be okay taking a GMAX resonance here from um, from Yoko's own lap if it goes into that Rillaboom spot. And Malcolm finally ending the turn, like you said, with their own GMAX resonance, is going to be able to set up screens. This is actually going to last longer than Yoko's because it took that extra two turns to go for the Max Geysers and instead and now Yoko going to return fire with a max geyser so was able to you know get that first uh turn correctly but now Rillaboom is like yeah uh I'm okay with taking this water and is like at a nice amount of HP still as iron defense from Ferrothorn is going to be the last move on this turn of Dynamax for both trainers and Rillaboom comes back in and is able to get back that HP as well. I think you have to also keep in mind for Yoko's Lapras, it's going to be dealing out so much less damage even in the rain with those Max Geysers because of the fact that we did see two parting shots come through from that Incineroar. So Yoko might want to consider repositioning around that Lapras or maybe doesn't care about the stats if the end game is about using that Parish Song once again. But now that the Dynamax and the Gigantamax are over, you can consider working through that particular question as the match continues to go. Yeah, I think the adjustment for uh, having like that Incineroar and that Rillaboom just kind of switching in and out for each other and making sure that Lapras's um, sort of damage isn't as powerful as it could have been was really smart, right? Because Lapras has two attacks that can be super effective against both of those Pokemon. Um, and I think that adjustment from Mogra has just been really nicely done. Uh, and actually, Zacian is coming onto the field in place of that Lapras, gets that plus one from Intrepid Sword. Uh, and, you know, I'm not surprised I have to say that so many times lately. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one from a trumpet sword. You're going to have to see it quite a few more times, I think, because Zacian is definitely here to stay within the meta. Uh, but Necrozma now coming in is going to take the U-turn. But great, great pivots coming through from Mogar right now to be able to get Incineroar back into the fray, too. Yeah, and now that that Incineroar is back, is going to be able to get that Intimidate down onto that Necrozma. Again, a physical attacker that you kind of have to be worried about. Uh, we know that it sets up Trick Room, and like you know, that might be Yoko's like best play here because of the fact that you need to make sure that you can deal some like damage and that don't have to worry about those speeds. <laughs> but that Body Press, thanks to the Iron Defense from earlier, does a massive amount of damage to Incineroar. This is why screens are so important because that Incineroar would have been um, a dead cat on that switch in. Instead, is able to get a little bit of HP back from that Citrus Berry that it's chopping down on. And also thanks to its friend Rillaboom in the back is able to get some more HP from that grassy terrain. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was such big damage from Ferrothor and it makes it so scary to play against because of the fact that you have the plus two iron defense, you have the ability to set up those leech seeds, plus you also have the body press, which Incineroar did not like taking on the switch in. Um, and, and now here you're you're kind of in a position where, you know, maybe you you, you, you got to stop the trick room. So I think that's something that Mogar did a great job of, which is just getting that Incineroar in, have that fake out pressure and see whether or not uh, the Zacian will be able to take it out with this sword stance boost. Oh man, yeah. So Necrozma not going to be able to move at all here. And for Arthur, surprisingly enough, not going for protectors instead, just going to go for that damage into the Incineroar, is going to take it out. Uh, that critical hit not going to matter at all. Again, thanks to the fact that it's a plus two from um, that defense from Iron Defense. 
the interesting thing for me is you know that Mazash and are probably gonna be running a fighting type move and now you have this Barakum just sitting there and you're staring at it and you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for Incinor instead and just let um and just let the Zashian set up. Zacian setting up here is really scary, especially because the Zacian is in a much, much better position than it was in game number one, where it still has full health. It still has a lot of supportive partners to be able to use next to it, just like that Rillaboom. Now that that grassy terrain has gone, Rillaboom can just come back in and set it again using grassy surge. Yeah, I, I really like that because now you're preserving that um, Rillaboom for sort of a, like that end game as well against the Lapras there. Um, that. Oh man, that Zashin just totally clicked into Swords Dance again. That That's is... so greedy. <laughs> <laughs> so it greedy. Might be enough. It might but be it's enough such Yoko. a good call. Yeah, yeah, because Yoko is switching out that Necrozma um, for that Incineroar, and so now that Zashin is going to be actually, I can't even tell you what attack set it's at right now because there's like a lot of switching and then Intrepid Sword. Um, but Fake Out is not going to do anything into this Incineroar spot because it did just switch in right now. You know, Yoko unable to really set up that Shirk Room and might have to save it for later. But Body Press from Farathorn is going to be able to. Oh no, I lied. I, I lied. That is not picking up the knockout. That is too much speed that the Rillaboom held on to. I am so sorry I have ever doubted you, Rillaboom, because that was kind of clutch. Um, and being able to stay out and then have access to, like, that grassy line. And wait, is he, please, I was like, please don't click towards us again, because that was, like, I, I saw that, like, lock in, and that was really stressful. Oh my gosh, Sassian City has such an intense attack stat though. You had the sword, the two swords dances that put it at plus four, um, plus you had the Intrepid Sword to put it at plus five, and then you had one Intimidate, so it should be at plus four right now, which is really, oh, really so scary. scary. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and Rillaboom is going to be switched out for the Lapras, and Sonora is like, hey, you know what, we're not going to have to attack this turn because that's kind of scary. So fakes out that Zashian, and Body Press from Frothorn is going to go into that Lapras spot, does a lot of damage. Um, but Lapras is able to hold on with that 48, 48 HP. We are still behind the Aurora Veil screens, um, and now Zashian is able to recover a little bit of, of HP. Or so actually, it hasn't, yeah, so that fake out damage was basically non-existent, and it only stopped yeah. it from one turn. And it's fat. Yeah, it's a plus four. Thank you for that, Mogar, that we got to see that and confirm it. Yeah, it lo yeah, it looks it looks really, really good. Um you know, here you can definitely go ahead and, and click some Sacred Swords and, and just go ahead and, and try to get that damage down onto both of these Pokemon for super effective damage. Um, but it's, it's going to be enough now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Man, it is so rare to see an Incinar be taken out in one shot from a super effective move, but that Zashian Sacred Sword was able to do so, as now Lapras's uh, Freeze Right is able to go into that Frother. And Frother, yeah, is going to return with a Body Press and pick up the knockout on Lapras, but you know, you've got that Grassy, you've got the uh, Rillaboom in the back now, you've got uh, the Zashian at plus four, so it's you're down to the last two Pokemon, but I don't think you're quite down and out yet, especially because you set up the Zashian so well. Oh, the Zacian is so, so scary here. And then you still have the Rillaboom, so you're still getting a little bit of fake-out pressure for the remaining Pokemon on Yoko's side of the field. And if we see Mogar get these next couple of turns correctly, this is going to be a very, very good position for them to be in. I, th I think you're very safe here to try to go for a, a knockout. Um, I think uh, Protect here would be would be pretty devastating if the... the you do get the, the trick room up, but yeah, there's the protect coming in from the Farothorn. Yoko, um, her screens actually ran out, and so yeah, like, like you said, Farothorn protects here, um, but Rillaboom was able to stop Necrozma from going for a trick room setup as it's going to be flinched here, and Zashian going for that Sacred Sword, not going to do any damage, but at least Rillaboom was able to get a little bit of health. I think there might be one or two more turns left of Grassy Terrain, so at least Rillaboom was able to take advantage of um, that priority move, but again, um, we know that Yoko's team is a little bit slower than most teams we're used to seeing. Yeah, so Yoko's definitely going to be able to take advantage of the the trick room whenever it does get set up. Um, but we did see the the fake out from the Rillaboom, and and now hopefully Zacian's just going to be able to take out Mr. Krasma before that trick room can get set up. If I was I paying attention correctly. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I got picked up. But I think 
if you double down into the necrozma, you might be able to stop it from setting up trick room because all that's left in the back for Yoko is that Lapras. And Zacian is in such like a powerful spot, right? Uh, a double protect from for Rothorn is unable to be, uh, is, to, is unable to go off, but Rillaboom able to go no, in. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh my god, I no, that, that was exactly what, oh no, Malcolm doubled down into that necrozma and. Oh my gosh, Necrozma was like, nope, I am going to show you why I am the better, uh, like, I guess, cat dog in this scenario, because, it, you know, like, Zacian and Necrozma staring down at each other, that was such a rough miss for Malcolm. I, oh, like, missing no. that high force power, the one time you needed it to hit, that it was exactly what, like, they should have done, and Yoko's Necrozma, it, you just can't touch it. Oh, like, it's just, oh, oh my no. god. I, I honestly think that is something that costs you the game at that point because now you're in trick room that cost oh my gosh it. that yeah wow what a quick quick turn of events for this game i was kind of expecting we were going to be able to go into game number three it's possible that things still get you know, switched around here, but in Trick Room, Yoko is definitely favored here. Going for the Earthquake from that Necrozma uh, does so much damage to that Zacian. Oh man, I think that 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 high horsepower miss, I I feel so bad for Malcolm because that is like, <sighs> like you played that turn perfectly, right? Like you ignored the Farofa, which went for another protect. Your Zacian was able to do massive amounts of damage into that Necrozma and Rillaboom had one job. I take back everything that I've said about that Rillaboom so far. I mean, the Zacian, you know, all you can really do is click Earthquake and it just you're in trick room there's just there's such little outs for you i think right now for the sasha and um you know even though it's super cheeky that you can like click sword stamps twice like it would have paid off like it, it, it was so close <sighs> it was such a close game such a close set malcolm played so incredibly well this entire time um, it's definitely, I, you know, I, I don't like to say anything is over until it's over, over, uh, but, but boy, this is looking like a close. real rough spot. Yeah. Oh man, Lapras go, actually, maybe, maybe there is a chance. Lapras protected the start, but no, Necrozma is still gonna go for Earthquake. I mean, uh, maybe mm -hmm. if, like, the Zacian holds on somehow, it might be able to do so, but, you know. No. Like, oh, oh my god, what? it held on! What? Oh my gosh! Wait, it held on! What oh, HP? No. Oh my gosh, you know what? If Trick Room was almost over, I would say there was a chance. Um, but, oh my gosh, that would have been so, that would have been so crazy. If you can get like, like what, three protects, I think you have that opportunity and that chance to. Oh my God, this was crazy. Come on, and, triple protect. <laughs> uh, that's insane because um, Grassy Terrain expired too, so that, that Earthquake does full damage. Oh my, oh my gosh! Okay, okay, this is... I, I I don't know the chances of a triple protect. I think it's like 1% oh, less. Oh, it's, it's not it's good really enough, low. probably, but it's, I, it's what, if, what if it happens? Okay, it's there's not a second protect! Oh my god, this is so stressful. <laughs> okay, Mogar has a chance. The RNG is now... In, oh, okay! Oh, no, <laughs> I think they got it. Over. It's oh over. my god! Oh, we need god. a second protect. Okay, it's at plus four. And Aurora Mail is gone, and I I think this should be a dead Lapras. And oh my oh God, my that God. turn around! Oh my God, what the heck just happened? <laughs> this is insane! Oh my God, I just what the heck? I <laughs> I, I can't. That was an insane end game right there. I I don't even know where to start. I just I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, can I can I just start out by saying like what a good boy Zacian getting the double protect. Let's oh go, doggo. We're actually going to a game number three, oh which is very, very rare to see on this particular stream. So I can't be more excited, especially when it is top four. We're playing a best of three. You need two wins to secure the win to go on to the grand finals. And Mogar and Yoko are both giving it all they've absolutely got. This this is incredible. I'm blown away right now. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't even imagine that. Like the amount of stress that you're going through in that moment too. Okay. So let's see, you've got the high horsepower miss. You've got the earthquake surviving on one HP. You get the double protect and 
honestly, because like Mogar had played that game so well, like from like the beginning to the end, right? You've got like the pivoting and the switching out the Pokemon for um, special attack drops on the Lapras to intimidate um, the Zacian going for two sword stance and like being able to absolutely demolish like both the Ferrothorn and the Necrozma. I just, oh my God. <laughs> That my mind my mind is reeling right now. That was such an exciting match to be able to see. Uh, Zacian deserves a big treat right now. Give it some pats on the head. I don't know. Whatever you're it doing, hurting. Mogar, to train to train your uh, Zacian, keep it up because it clearly loves you. Um, yeah, that that is amazing. so exciting. What a great way to end a game. Oh, my goodness. That was... I, I cannot believe that. Like, yeah, so honestly, if your Pokemon does something good for you in a match, you take it to Pokemon Camp and you feed it curry and you play with it. And that's what you should be doing. <laughs> like, absolutely should be doing right now. I that that's actually which was like, nope, I'm gonna show Necrozma why I am the better restricted now over it and it's time is over. But game three, uh, and you know, this is gonna be it. We've got the same lead from Yoko from game two is that Ferrothorn and that Lapras. And actually the same lead from Mogar, it worked out so well for him before he was able to go for those fighting shots. So it's gonna be Lapras and Incineroar as the lead for him for this final game. <laughs> Yeah, so take it take it a look at the you know situation again. I think we're gonna go ahead and see a double Gigantamax here, uh, just because if history likes to repeat itself, which it often does, I, I think that the double Gigantamax is definitely certainly something to look at for both Malcolm and Yoko. Uh, setting up the screens really early here, I think that's something that Mogar did incredibly well during that game number two was waiting so that the screens would be active a little bit longer. So going for those Max Geysers first and then going for the max G max resonance at the very end of their Dynamax. They were able to play that so beautifully in that first game and uh, honestly like the screens coming out in the end and maybe like making a difference uh, for Mogar was uh, absolutely fantastic. So Mogar going for that same Gigantamax on this turn is going to be the faster Lapras uh, and you know maybe us we might see a switch up from Yoko is actually not going for the Gigantamax as Ferrothorn is hiding behind that protect on this turn. Incineroar going for the party shot, which we saw happen Ooh. in game two, is going to go down into that Lapras. But uh, now one, so now we actually have a little bit of a change. Yoko did not go for that Gigantamax. No, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. I, I think that kind of recognizing that Yoko, uh, you know, or, or Malcolm in this case is, is going to go for that turn one Gigantamax again, maybe wanting to preserve the Gigantamax for a little bit later, I think is absolutely the way to go. I think Yoko may even be maybe going for something like a Parish song. I don't really know here, um, but I think whatever is going to happen is is very good for, for Yoko, depending on how much this G-Max resonance is going to do. Yeah, so actually a little bit of change because like we had pointed out, you know, um, Mogar had been going for those Max Geysers first, but G-Max Resonance is going to be the move of choice is setting it up. Uh, Rillaboom making a reappearance was able to do so much, but oh, it is that turn one Paris song. Um, so <laughs> Yoko clicking into Paris, I, I actually love that and that is fantastic because I know people I think were joking about like, hey, maybe if you go for that turn one Parish because now you're going to be putting Mogra in a position where they're going to have to switch out Pokemon <laughs> eventually. Parish song turn one if real. Uh, <laughs> that's basically what Yoko is saying in this case and I really, really like that statement. I think it really puts a lot of pressure onto Mogar to get a lot done with their Dynamax turns while that Parish Song is starting to tick down. And then you also you have to be very cognizant now of knowing how much you have left for that Parish counter, because you don't want your Pokemon to go down to something like that. We're going to see a lot of shuffling around with the Pokemon here. Lapras starting that off from Yoko's side as Incineroar is going to be coming in. So this new turn from Rillaboom is not going to do as much. Um, and so actually, it, it looks like it did more to Rillaboom than it did to Ferrothorn here as uh, Mogar is able to switch out that Rillaboom. going to probably, oh, bringing in that Zacian. So interestingly enough, the only different Pokemon I think that both players have brought are their Restricted. So it's the only thing different. Uh, oh, sorry. And like that Rillaboom um, sort of interaction. But Zashi is going to get that plus one now. And another G-Max resonance from Malcolm's uh, Lapras is going to go into that. Frothin does a lot of damage in there. Again, not behind the screens now. Uh, and if that Lapras wasn't on a timer before, it definitely is now thanks to that Leech Seed landing onto that Lapras. 
Yeah, for Hawthorne definitely wants to get those leech seeds set up. So this is a great position for Yoko to be in. Now having landed that leech seed, uh, Lapras is going to be taking a little bit of chip damage at the end of every turn. But more importantly, like you mentioned, Regina, you do have now a timer on how long Lapras is going to be able to last on this field. So trying to get as much done with those Gigantamax turns and then get the heck out of dodge so that you don't have to worry about it moving forward. Or get away from dog. <laughs> Um, but that Incineroar is going to be switched out last <laughs> back in as Bastion oh takes that opportunity to go for that sword stance. It is now going to be, I want to say, at plus two or three. I can't remember when that Incineroar came in. Last turn of Dynamax for uh, Malcolm's Lapras is going to hit that Lapras on the switch in as well. Then Incineroar was like, no, I'm not going to take that water type move to the face. Um, and still has to worry about that Leech Seed and its Parish uh, Song counter. But now for all I'm going to take this opportunity as well to Leech Seed that Zod. So, yes, you can set up those sword stances, but at the cost of your HP at the end of every turn. Yeah, you are going to, yeah, I have a little bit of trouble, I think, setting up for the, the sword stance, but I, I think at the end of the day, like, Mogar did such a great job of utilizing the sword stances last turn that I don't think you're too worried about having to take a little bit of leech seed chip here. So... Looking at forward, looking ahead, Yoko still has not used their Gigantamax yet, is patiently waiting. I think that Lapras, now that it is back in the fray, might go for the Gigantamax on this next turn. But the Parish counter is falling. So now a little bit of onus is on Yoko to determine how these switches are going to go through. Oh man, that Zashian though was able to hold on from full HP, like with that earthquake and everything else. So maybe that leechy damage might hurt Mogar later on in the end. You're, like that Rothorn really just sitting there and kind of like, in a sense, taunting, um, <laughs> kind of taunting Mogar said, and is like, hey, you either do something about me now or you slowly drain away that HP as Lapras is going to be switched out. We're going to see Incinar coming into place. Uh, both of these Pokemon for these traders just love switching spots with each other. We saw the reverse happen that previous turn with Yoko, but um, an Intimidate down into both these Pokemon. But more importantly, we know that that Incinar is able to have those parting shots. Um, this Incinar, though, from Yoko's side is going to be coming in as well. So we've got these two cats staring each other down. So oh, negating a little bit of that attack boost from that sword stance that, um, that Zashin was able to pull off that previous turn. Yeah, but here's the Gigantamax that we were talking about, just making sure that you can get those screens set up for a little bit later on if uh, they believe that Necrozma might be the final Pokemon in the back for Yoko. Have we seen everything yet? Don't think to I don't think they bring Togekiss here. No, I, I'm pretty sure it's like that Necrozma because it's just, it does so much damage with that Earthquake and that weakness policy. Um, you know, once it can knock out Pokemon that aren't at one HP, but wow, Sacred Sword, a clean knockout for that Zashi, uh, for Zashi and onto that Incineroar. Again, those those pluses from Sword Stance are so scary. They make Zashi look like, <laughs> absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, now Zashian I mean, doesn't have to worry about those Intimidates anymore either, now that Incineroar is out of the picture. So you're kind of just continuously sitting at plus two unless you go for another Sword Stance again. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, Max Gasser did about a little bit more than half. And thanks to the fact that um, that Incineroar went down as well, like you also don't have to worry about Frothor and uh, You have to worry about Frothor later on, but those Leech Seas are going to be a problem, but not for right now. But there is the last Pokemon from Yoko. It is going to be that Necrozma. Uh, we know it loves to set up Trick Room. And the question is, is Mokar going to be able to stop it? Let's see what happens for this next turn. Uh, as yeah, Trick Room is definitely a threat. Uh, Yoko would probably prefer in this instance, based on the Pokemon that are left to function within the Trick Room, but it's time to see what Zacian does best. The Behemoth Blade. Oh, I love the way it looks. It's such a cool animation, and it's able to <laughs> easily pick up that knockout onto that Gigantamax Lapras. Again, that plus two, and the fact that Behemoth Blade does like what extra damage to a Dynamax Pokemon uh, makes it like the perfect mm -hmm. like the perfect choice to click into. His parting shot from Incineroar is going to go down into uh, that Duskmane Necrozma, and Necrozma is like, yeah, okay, you can get rid of like my attack here. But the important thing is if you if you don't stop that Necrozma from setting up Trick Room, um, you might a little bit of trouble however grassy terrain being on the field means that the earthquakes that we've seen the cosmic use won't be doing as much damage 
Yes, that is a incredibly important piece of information about grassy terrain, which is that once it's active on the field, you are doing less damage with moves, uh, with certain ground type moves. And Earthquake just happens to be one of those ground type moves that does get affected by the grassy terrain being active. However, it's gone now. So now that that's gone, this Necrozma could definitely get a lot done with those Earthquakes. Unless that really See? comes back in. So. Yeah, I think that Relum was still in the back, but uh, Yoko was able to set up Trick Room, though. So Ferrothorn and Necrozma are going to have to really put in a lot of work to be able to take care of all of um, Malcolm's Pokemon still. You know, you, excuse me, you've, you've got to worry about sort of like that Intimidate Cycling pressure from Incineroar. Um, you know, it has Parting Shot as well. Uh, but resetting the stats for, um, for the Zacian, we know that it had that... Um, it was able to pull off the sword stance, but now in Sonora coming in for the Intimidate, gonna try to make sure that even if you don't have grassy terrain, that Necrozma is not able to do a lot of damage with Earthquake uh, otherwise, but for author going straight for a body press, even without any sort of boost, still does a pretty good amount of damage. Necrozma going for the Earthquake, um, thanks to the Intimidates and the parting shots from Incineroar earlier on, is gonna activate its Citrus Berry and does barely any damage to both of these Pokemon. Yeah, look at that Citrus Berry becoming active again. Oh, and Parish Song now coming out this time from Mogur's Lapras. That's definitely putting a timer on the end of this game. And wow, how the tides have turned from this series. Yeah, I, I honestly, like, Mogar has been playing this fantastically. They've been able to pivot properly in a way that I think puts a lot of pressure onto Yogo. And that Parish Song just sort of seals up the deal, right? Like, yeah, Yogo's uh, Lapras clicked Parish Song at the beginning of the turn, but Mogar was able to switch around. And now they're able to just click it and put a lot more pressure now onto Yogo. Because if you don't end this game in the next couple of turns and just start picking up knockouts, then, you know, you're in a lot of trouble. But there's two Intimidators with Incineroar and Rillaboom, and, and sorry, I meant Fake Outers with Incineroar and Rillaboom, so you can stop both mm -hmm. of you this Pokemon from really attacking. Absolutely, and that's going to put a huge damper on Yoko's game plan to try to secure these knockouts even faster, especially because Ferrothorn as a Pokemon is not usually one that's known for dishing out too much damage. And then the Necrozma as well, knowing that it does have access to Earthquake, but you have the grassy terrain on the field, uh, you're going to have to get really, really good reads in here if you're Yoko in order to try to knock out these Pokemon very quickly. Ooh, Swords Dance though coming up from this Necrozma. Yeah, so actually both of Yoko's Pokemon taking the opportunity to, to set up a little bit, right? You've got the mm -hmm. Iron Defense to help Body Press, and then you've got the Sword Stance to help mitigate some of the attack drops you've been getting um, from Party Shot and from Incineroar's Intimidate. Uh, that is one turn of Parish Song, though, and I think it's still going to be a little bit rough for Yoko. I mean, Malcolm has all the pieces that they kind of need to be able to continually switch around, and just to make it so, yeah, Yoko, you can try to set up, but again, if you're not taking out Pokemon right away, then... Mogar is still in kind of a good spot to be able to be like, okay, I'll just keep switching Pokemon and pivoting them around. Absolutely, and you can already see some of that fake-out pressure you were talking about having to come to the fray with that Rillaboom slicking, clicking that fake-out into that Necrozma slot. And Intimidate is going to continue to lower the amount of attack that both of these Pokemon are going to be able to dish out as well. So that's something that you're just going to have to keep in mind moving forward. And I think that Malcolm really, really positioned themselves well in this game. Yeah, and so now Body Pass, yeah, going to the Incinera is going to pick up the knockout there, so no more Intimidate Cycling. But again, um, the fact that Necrozma is unable to move on this turn, and yeah, you can get the HP back slowly for both Pokemon, but Parasong works so well against Pokemon like Ferrothorn, who at the end game, you know, you're just sitting there waiting for it to set up and like, yeah, recover HP, and it's sort of the pain it can, like, in a lot of cases, can 1v3 a lot of teams. But mm -hmm. because of the counter that you have with Parasong, you are making it so that that end game slow game that it likes is no longer a viable option. Oh boy, so what a <laughs> what a fantastic set between these players. It's unfortunately the timer is counting down and we are moments away from seeing our very first grand finalist for the women's tournament. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the plays that we saw from both of these players. Mm -hmm. Fantastic set. We were here for some incredible history making. Yeah. I also really appreciate that Mogar is just continually switching out Pokemon, right? Like, at this point, you know that you are probably going to win this set, but making sure and guaranteeing yourself the win and just saying, okay, well, I'm going to save this Pokemon for later, and I'm going to try to just make it so that um, Yoko has to continually attack, Body Press knocks out. Um, that 
Zacian on the switch in and sends Steel Strike from Necrozma, you know, it's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, maybe some okay damage actually to the Slapras. It has been intimidated and, like, the, the Zora's Dance was not able to really help stop that. Like, yeah, it's still above half health. Freeze Drag going into that, like, Necrozma just for some extra damage. But now, you know, Malcolm, I think, was able to just shuffle Pokemon around in such a good way that this Ferrothorn, which is normally a pain, is just knocked out immediately thanks mm -hmm. to that pair song. <laughs> Labrys looking pretty happy about this one, but congratulations to Malcolm for moving forward to the grand finals of the women's tournament. Um, I need, I see some questions in chat about you know whether you know about um, you know pronouns and and things like that. Uh, Malcolm is non-binary. We allow and are always looking at trying to create spaces that improve the diversity of players and uh, trainers that play Pokemon. So this is just one of the ways and one of the efforts of by made by many in order to do just that. So we are so proud to see these incredible players duking it out in these top four sets and in these grand finals coming up soon. Uh, Regina, honestly, oh. I don't have much <laughs> to say about the set except that it was fantastic. It was so fun. That was so, like... RNG balanced out in the end after that game too, but I think that game too was probably one of my favorite things that I've seen in a very, very long time. That um, end and game. It was so yeah. much fun popping off of that. It's just like, oh my God, I cannot believe all of this is happening. Um, I, yeah, I just, that was fantastic. And I know that there are a lot of people in chat who are like, uh, proud of both Yoko and um, and Milgar. And I'm very excited to see how finals is going to play out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's going to be such a fantastic time, but I think I'm taking a break for this one. We're going to have the other top four match coming up soon. Uh, I believe, Regina, it's going to be you and Gabby taking the fold for that one, and yes. then I might be back a little bit later. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I hope that you all are enjoying the show. I hope you are all enjoying the stream. I hope you're all celebrating the incredible diversity and the incredible players that we have that are in this tournament. And it's so great to see all the support for everybody. So yeah, uh, it's it's been it's been such a great day so far. GG's to Yoko, absolutely.